Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. A Golden Knight loses his life at a Chicago air show. A drone racing league may be formed. This pilot helmet seems like science fiction, but it's not. I'm Brie Cross, it is August 18th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. What was supposed to be a great day of festivity at Chicago's Air and Water Show on Sunday turned tragic when two skydivers collided in flight. One of the skydivers involved in the accident was Timmy Holland, who is a highly experienced skydiver with the Navy Leapfrog Skydive Team. The other skydiver, Sergeant First Class Corey Hood, was a 14-year veteran of the U.S. Army Golden Knights Exhibition Skydive Team. It has now been made official by Northwestern Memorial Hospital officials that Sergeant Hood succumbed to his injuries. It appears from video recordings that he was descending on a reserve parachute but collided with tall buildings, resulting in an uncontrolled fall to the ground. The Navy skydiver received serious but non-life-threatening injuries. The exact cause of the accident is still under investigation. We at ANN express our sincere condolences to Sergeant Hood's immediate family and to his U.S. Army brothers and sisters. Video gamers versus military unmanned aircraft operators. That's the premise behind the Drone Racing League, which got a lot closer to reality last week when Miami Dolphins owner Stephen Ross plunked down a million dollars into the idea through his RSE Ventures firm. ESPN reports that the league will feature races that pit self-taught UAV pilots, mainly out of the video game world, against pilots that were trained to fly UAVs in the military. RSC Ventures President and CEO Matt Higgins said, quote, It has all the makings of a modern-day sport. The pilots have to have great reflexes and hone their skills over hours and hours of practice. And first-person viewing lends itself to an amazing spectator experience with virtual reality, end quote. For racing, the pilots will wear special glasses that will allow them a first-person view of the aircraft's flight path. The aircraft will fly up to 70 miles per hour, according to the league. As we at ANN see it, any organized activity involving the recreational use of drones is a step in the right direction towards responsible operation of personally owned UAVs. And on a personal note, it sounds amazing. After the break, a synthetic vision helmet sees through the airplane. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Senator Joni Ernst, Lockheed Martin, and Rockwell Collins executives commemorated the delivery of the first-generation 3F35 helmet-mounted display system known as the HMDS last week. In addition to the HMDS, the Lockheed Martin F35 Lightning II demonstrator was on site at the Cedar Rapids headquarters of Rockwell Collins. Senator Ernst said, quote, Today's visit was an opportunity to place focus on Rockwell Collins, as manufacturing makes up such an important part of our economy here in Iowa. Having served in the military for over 20 years, I appreciate the company's efforts in support of our national defense, our armed forces, and our veterans, end quote. The Generation 3 helmet, which includes an improved night vision camera, improved liquid crystal displays, Automated alignment and software improvements is to be introduced to the fleet in 2016. 
The helmet provides synthetic vision, which allows operations in day or night and in any weather. Infrared cameras mounted in various external locations provide the pilot's helmet vision to see through the aircraft. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here is this week's Aero Calendar. On August 22nd, you'll find another AOPA event at their Minneapolis fly-in. Join AOPA and your fellow pilots and aviation enthusiasts for the AOPA fly-in at Anoka County Blaine Airport. The grassroots gathering features something for everyone with exhibitors, aircraft displays, seminars, and activities to interest and delight your entire family. Now we move to Flagstaff, Arizona, where August 22nd marks the event known as Thunder Over Coconino. It's a fly-in and car show featuring rides in a P-51 Mustang or Ford Tri-Motor with Young Eagle flights tossed in for the kids. There will also be a program featuring the Tuskegee Airmen. This event, taking place on August 22nd and 23rd, has a name that's a mouthful. It's called the Wings and Warbirds over Port Clinton RC and Full Scale Air Show. It's being held at the Erie Ottawa International Airport in Port Clinton, Ohio. It's a complete air show that includes Warbirds, model aircraft, and a lot more. Now here's a special event being held August 26th through August 30th. It's called Operation LZ Welcome Home Vietnam Era Veterans. The Welcome Home event will be held in Forest City Airport in Forest City, Iowa. The goal of the event is to make all Vietnam era vets, their spouses, children, and grandchildren feel welcome in joining together with their brothers and sisters of the war. Weekend activities include a full-blown air show. Everyone is welcome. After these messages, you and helicopters in Nepal underfunded. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The United Nations office in Nepal says that helicopter relief services for areas hit by the recent earthquake may be cut short due to a funding shortfall. To date, only $8.8 .8 million was received, leaving a $9.2 million shortfall. A special week is about to begin for approximately 30 students from Aalborg University in Denmark. Their satellite will be launched to the International Space Station aboard the Japanese HTV-5 cargo vehicle tomorrow. Their CubeSat will be deployed a few weeks later. The Japanese regional carrier Amakusa Airlines took delivery in Toulouse, France of a 48-seat ATR-42-600 turboprop airliner. This is the first of the type to start operations in Japan. This new aircraft was purchased from Nordic Aviation Capital. UPS pilots mark the second anniversary of the crash of Flight 1354 on approach to Birmingham Shuttlesworth International Airport with a call for change. They are again calling for an end to the carve-out of all cargo airline operators from science-based pilot rest rules. Pratt & Whitney's TF-33 engine and its commercial variant, the JT-3D, celebrated its 55th anniversary in June. The JT-3D was the first turbofan engine designed and produced by Pratt & Whitney. 
Production ceased in 1985 and more than 1,100 are still in use today. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Ever since the Connecticut State Legislature decreed that their favorite son, Gustav Whitehead, was the first person to successfully fly a controllable powered airplane, a battle has ensued with the National Aviation Heritage Alliance, also known as NAHA. NAHA, which is located in the state of Ohio, is a major supporter of the historic significance of what the Wright brothers accomplished and they hold the position that the Wright brothers deserve the credit they have had all these years as the first to fly a controllable powered airplane. Now NAHA has announced it is donating aviation history books to the Connecticut State Library in honor of National Aviation Day, which falls on August 19th. It appears this is a not so veiled way of saying we are not calling the Connecticut State Legislature stupid, but we do think they're ignorant. Naha is donating one copy each of The Bishop Boys, A Life of Wilbur and Orville Wright by Tom D. Crouch, Visions of a Flying Machine, The Wright Brothers and the Process of Invention by Peter Jacob, and The Wright Brothers by David McCullough. If you haven't read these books, you missed out on some fascinating history. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.